Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So, today we have a video that I am doing <laughs> based off the feedback I've had off other videos, okay? So, today we're going to talk about how hard it is owning a dog because I have been very honest and open about my experience of owning a dog. So, I have a Cocker Spaniel called Oakley. I'll bring him up. Oakley, come. Come on. Oh, this is him. Can we see him? Can you say hello to that camera? This is him. Is he going to freak out? No, he's been alright actually. So he is one and a half years old. He is, oh god, he's nearly two now. He is two. I know. Oh, right in my mouth. He is two at the end of July. Uh, he is a working Cocker Spaniel and he's a pain in the bum. Aren't you? Are you paid in the bum? This is my, this is my right to complain about a dog, right? Because this is him. I have one, and he is a pain in the bum. Right, I'm gonna put him back with his with his dad. Go on, go, with dad. Up. Oh, You've got a sock. Hey, How have you got that? Dad. I'm just making sure he's settled. So, <laughs> no, no, he doesn't like me filming at all. Go on. I have been very, very honest from the very moment of getting Oakley. I have filmed a lot of his life so if you are interested I will leave the link to the playlist of him below up above because there are a lot of videos about Oakley. I have been very very honest from the get-go and the one comment that I have had from like the, the top comment I've had from people have been people messaging me saying thank you so much for talking about how hard you found it because all the other content I've found has been people saying it's the best thing they have ever done in their life. And for me, that's not the case. And I've had a lot of people saying thank you for that. So I'm making this video in order to try and reach more people who feel like this. Because none of my videos about Oakley are labelled, it's going crap, or I'm not enjoying this. So that's what this video is. I am outwardly proclaiming that I find it very, very, very difficult owning a dog. And we're going to talk about it a little bit because a lot of people are in the same boat and I personally haven't had anybody apart from one girl talk to me about this in how hard they find owning a dog. And before I got Oakley, I, I wouldn't have even thought about, oh, yeah, it's difficult just owning a dog. Obviously, you hear how difficult it is when you have rescue dogs, when they have problems. But Oakley isn't even a rescue dog and I have a lot of problems with him. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to start this video though with a few caveats. So obviously I own a dog. This is my experience. I'm not saying that you're going to have this experience. If you're watching this in like anticipation of getting a dog, you might not have this experience. And I don't want any of you to hate me for me having this experience. I have had a lot of hate from the videos that I do with Oakley. It is by far the most hate I've had of anything in my time on social media because people don't like me being honest about it. People don't like me treating the Oakley the way I do. And you are by far, sorry, he's <laughs> like bowing on say. I think he's hot. I forgot what I was saying, but of, of course you are entitled to your opinion, but before you comment and tell me that I am raising my dog wrong, please remember that it's me on the other side of it and not just somebody on the internet that it doesn't affect whatsoever. You are literally commenting on my content that I get notified from, telling me that I am being, doing a terrible, terrible job when I do the utmost to try and make sure that he has a good life. We have been in contact with trainers. We are still trying to get in contact with trainers, but it's very, very hard currently. We have done as much as we can. He became my life. And please keep that in mind before you tell me that I'm not doing enough, because I have done enough. And I'm fine with saying that. If it is bad what you comment still, I'm gonna delete it. And that is purely because you make me doubt myself. And I know that's what you want, but that's not what I want. The last thing I need is when I'm struggling already with Oakley is somebody on the internet telling me I'm doing a terrible job and me going back and finding those comments and reading them all the time and then feeling worse about it. So that's not me trying to say that you can't have an opinion, of course you can. But I don't wanna go on my channel and reread those comments all the time telling me how bad of a dog mom I am. So it might get deleted and I'm sorry if you don't agree with that, but I have to say this on the majority of the videos that I do with Oakley at the minute because 
I still get so much hate for it. So yeah, that's that out of the way. So I haven't enjoyed having a dog so far. So we have got Oakley, oh, September, October? September. End of September. So we got him when he was eight weeks old and it hasn't been an easy go of it. Let's put it this way. If you are subscribed, you'll know all this already, but I'm gonna talk as if you haven't seen the majority of it. So Oakley was a perfect puppy. He was perfect. I remember saying to Jack's dad, Jack's dad, a few weeks after we got him, was like, so how have you found owning a puppy? And I was like, it was easier than what I thought. <laughs> It was very, very easy for those first weeks. And we did everything. We did so much training. I We did training every two hours, right? Mm -hmm. Jack's sitting there, and obviously Jack co-parents, Oakley. But we did training every two hours. It was mainly me. Jack works nine to five. I'm self-employed. I can work around his training. He's trying to play with your feet. Hey. He, yeah, he was very good. We did a whole lot of training. I, <laughs> And he was brilliant. He was perfect. Until it was about Christmas. So what was that? August, September, October, November, December. About five month mark. And he changed completely. And that's not me saying that anything happened. It's probably a hormone thing. But basically that was kind of when separation anxiety started to kick in. And that on top of typical puppy problems took its toll so the typical puppy problems I mean is that he is a high energy dog right he doesn't want to be cuddled and I know there is exceptions to that rule you are going to make my phone fall but puppies tend not want to be cuddled they want to be jumping all over and scratching and that's what Oakley did are you wanting to come talk with mommy are you are you what do you want to say? Are you sticking up for yourself? You tell them. You make your excuses. He used to scratch me. He used to bite me. That is nothing that I wasn't expecting. It was more than what I was expecting. But he's a puppy. I just didn't expect it to be that much and that often. So I would, I end, I've still got scars on my wrist for how much he used to scratch me. You get settled. And it was just more than what I was expecting. You want to be able to sit like this with them. You want to be able to sit and stroke them, but they want to play. It's really freaking hard getting this dog that you think is going to be the perfect thing in your life. It's going to bring so much joy to you. And then you try and give them love and then they don't want it. Like I remember in one of the update videos, I think it was the 15 week one, we were, I had Oakley in and he jumped up and bit my face just because he wanted to. Oakley doesn't have biting or scratching problems now so it's not that that was a problem but he was a puppy and nobody talks about how when they're a puppy they don't want much to do with you unless you get a good breed. That is one of the, not a good breed, a different kind of breed. That is one of the caveats to this video as well in that a lot of the problems that I'm going to mention probably are very specific to Oakley's breed because he is a working breed. He has very, very, very high energy. If you have a breed that is, for lack of a better term, lazy, not in a negative way whatsoever, but loves to sleep and just loves to lie down, like kind of like lurchers or like bull... <coughs> Careful, did you just knock your head? Bulldog breeds, you might not get the same problems as me. And I know that's my fault. We picked a working breed. We and, and I don't want people to watch this and think, oh, we well, should have done your research on the breed. We did do the research, we, we did. But I didn't interpret the warning signs correctly. When it said high energy, I thought I could take him for a walk like two times a day. Please don't sneeze on my face <laughs> two times a day and I'd be fine. That's not what high energy means. High energy means he wants you to do something with him every minute of the day. Oh, that's a lovely little pose. My battery cut off, I apologize. So basically what I was saying was, I understand that it's my problem, that he has problems that are associated with his breed, and I got that breed, but I didn't understand what it meant. I, I did do the research, and I didn't understand it, okay? And it, just because it's part of his breed, doesn't mean that it's not difficult, okay? I understand it's my fault, but I'm still gonna complain about it. So yeah, but you might not have the same problems because a lot of it comes with his breed. So if you have a like a whippet or something and you are thinking, well, I don't have any of those problems, 
probably because you've got a really really good breed this isn't a breed that matches our lifestyle again i know it's my fault but it's still freaking hard anyway anyway yeah when they're a puppy it's freaking hard because you want to love them you want to touch them you want to do this but they won't they will literally bite your face and scratch at you because they don't understand that that's not what they're meant to do yet you've got to do that for them that is really freaking hard and there is nothing you can do about it like i've had quite a few people being like how do i stop the scratching how do i stop the biting and short of training which obviously we did with him time is the only thing that helps and that is really really difficult it is really really hard knowing that you've just got to wait it out because like i say they are a puppy and it just happens like it just they as long as you're doing the correct training and even then sometimes people who don't do the training they do just grow out of it so that was freaking hard but when he hit five months he decided he didn't want to be without us and I've had a lot of people being like, oh, well, he's a lockdown puppy. Of course, he's going to have separation anxiety. We prepare for it. Did you just fall? He, we were, were prepared. We did a lot of stuff for separation anxiety because I did so much research on training and trainers at... Oh, I just got something. Trainers at the time were saying, this is going to be a problem that you aren't leaving the house. So we did a lot of training for that. But then at five weeks, something just changed and he did not want to be in his crate by himself anymore. He did not want to be in the house by himself anymore. We couldn't even leave the room. He would scream in his crate. And I don't want people to think, oh, well, he was just like, you know, whimpering and crying. He would scream like he was being tortured. It was awful it was heartbreaking and this was the main problem that I was having at the time because we were creating Oakley still like during the day as in like he didn't have much free time around the house because that's what the trainers that I was listening to was saying to do and then I got in contact with them saying my dog is screaming in his crate until he gets let out and then when we put it back in he screams again we got in contact with trainers who were recommending this and they said He's just being a brat, essentially, that is the word that they use. He's just wanting to be out, he's just not wanting to be in his crate, and you're letting him out, and he's just being like, right, well, I cried, I can get out, even though we weren't really doing that. So we were keeping him in his crate, and he would just cry and cry and cry all the time. And then that associated with him still being a puppy, essentially, he was still, like, scratching and stuff when he got out. So that was difficult and obviously he was a pup as well so the other training that we do in like walking on the lead is recall weren't great they were good don't get me wrong for other dogs his age it was good because i was doing a lot of training but they were still just at the beginning stage so all of that paired together with separation anxiety where you can't even be in the same room with him but away from him it's freaking difficult okay so when he's a puppy okay okay Oh, he's not allowed on the set even unless I get unless he gets told he's allowed to be. So I was just letting him. You're being a very good boy. Yeah, you're being a very good boy. So, oh, you want up here? <laughs> what you doing? That was kind of like there's different stages of Oakley that I've struggled with, and that was his puppy stage, and that was really hard. They're not your toys, the mums. No, come on, get back. And that was his puppy stage. So that was really, really difficult, especially when if we took him to our, my grandparents, which is where he stays a lot of the time, he wasn't doing it there. So it was really, really difficult not being allowed. What? You're not getting those toys. Not being able to leave the house. When we were in the house, he was crying. Keep in mind, this is at the same time as lockdown. So it's freaking difficult. And then doing the training, and it not being that successful in terms of like the walking training, the recall training, it, it gets to be a lot, like it gets to be a lot and you just feel crap because you are putting in all this work and effort and they are pushing boundaries, they're seeing what they can get away with, they are doing all of these things and you can do nothing about it, you just have to react well. And I'm not gonna lie, it's really freaking hard trying to control your own emotions. It's the same as having kids. You've got to control your emotions so they don't react differently. If you get angry, the situation's gonna escalate, isn't it? And I get very, very frustrated very, very easily. There are times when I've yelled at Oakley, 100%. There are times where I've tugged his, his lead too hard, definitely. But they are never 
conscious decisions they come when you get so frustrated because you are trying so freaking hard and you want them to do what they're told and you want them to do what all the trainers do and then the dog just does it but then you do it and then they don't do it and you just get so freaking angry because it's constant like that's the thing with having a dog it's I'm going to compare to some kids a lot this is no disrespect for parents I know the difference it is a hundred percent different but there are a lot of similar simil similarities okay you want them to behave, you want them to do it, and then you are with them all of the time. So you get, you say you're doing a training session outside, you're trying to teach them to get a walk and a lead. You come back in, you don't get a break from them. I, I used to put Oakley in the crate and then he'd cry in the crate and it would be all the time. And then now when we've had a bad training session, we come inside, he'll just come and want attention. And you're just like, I don't want anything to do with you right now, but they're your dog. You can't escape them. That's it. They, they're here all the freaking time and you don't get a rest. It is very, very difficult. <laughs> Obviously all of this is coming under the caveat of you doing training and things like that. That is my experience because we have done a lot of training. If you aren't doing training, it's probably gonna be a little bit different because, you know what? I'm not even gonna go down that conversation. I don't wanna get into arguments with people, but it's probably gonna be a different experience if you're not doing training with your dog. I'm worried about how long this video is gonna be, so I'm gonna move on to the issues that we're having now. Things kind of changed with Oakley and our dynamic and stuff when we moved to this house. We have him out pretty much all of the time now. He's only in his crate when we leave or when he goes to bed at night. We shut the door, but Oakley goes in his crate a lot of the time. <laughs> you are being very freaking cute. I don't know if I can show. Can you see him? <laughs> He's being very freaking cute. So the dynamic is very, very different as to what it was when we were in the flat in that he is out all of the time. We don't have the problem with him crying in the crate anymore. He loves his crate. The issue has never been his crate. It's been next to us. He will go in there on a night time by himself when he's done. He'll just take himself to his crate. He very much likes his crate now. They aren't the problems that we have now. The main one is separation anxiety, isn't it, little man? It's not being able to leave him and it's not even to an extent where we can't leave the house. We can't leave him. So as I'm doing this video, come on, go back up here. He will not leave my side. And you saw when the video started, when I start talking to somebody, he comes and finds me. It's the same with anything. Oh, you want, <laughs> okay, come on then. Um, I feel guilty. I don't normally let him up with me this much, but because I'm complaining about him, I feel guilty. Oakley, you're not getting my graduation, Teddy. Look at him wanting that, Jack. He's sniffing at that. Because I'm complaining about him, I feel really bad, so that is why he is up with me. He, he, we can't even leave the room. That's how bad it is. It's not just we can't leave the house. It's not that he's just crying and he's crying when we leave the house or howling or misbehaving. We literally can't leave the room. It happens as well if one of us is out of the house. If Jack leaves the house, he will pace around the room and cry for Jack for the first like 10 minutes and then he will sell. He doesn't so much with me, does he? He won't pace around and stuff with me. And then if we are in the garden and we leave him in this room, we have French doors. Babe, what are you doing? <laughs> right, I think this is enough. My, um, my sympathy for complaining about you only goes so far. Can you get off? Good boy. If we are in the garden and we shut the doors and he can see, see, he can see us, he will stand in here and cry. If we don't let him get his way, he will stand like this. He will just stand and cry at us. And if he, I don't know how to describe this problem. Basically, is another thing that he is doing is he will just stop and stare at us as if he wants something. And we have no idea what it is. It could be literally, we've just took him out for a massive long line walk. He's been to the toilet, he's got water, he's had his food and he sometimes will still walk around the room and then just stand and stare at us and cry and we still can't figure out what it is. He isn't the best in terms of leaving him. We just can't and he, it, I feel like you can tell it's separation anxiety as well rather than the trainer saying that it was just him being bratty because it's, it doesn't matter whether he's in his crate or in the, in, just in the room. He has to be around us. He has to be around us. Otherwise he will cry like that. His main thing now when we leave the house, because we are trying, we are still working on it, is howling. He doesn't screel, scream anymore or screech. Ah, 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 off. He will howl. Like, 
howl. And obviously we can't, we live in a terraced house, we can't leave him here doing that because it's not fair on him, it's not fair on the neighbours, it's not fair on anyone. So, I'm still finding it very, very difficult and I still find it difficult in terms of all of the things that we've worked on since he was a puppy, is walking, is recall, we still have to work on that. And it feels like a never ending circle because you train and you train and you think it's getting better, then something happens and then you still have to train. You Like, even if something happens or even if it's going really, really well, you have to train no matter what and it just feels like it's never ending. You think it's going well and then something knocks him off and then it all goes to crap again. Normally another awfully dog that you can't do anything about and you just... You're just like, oh my god, I've been doing this for so long and it feels like there's no improvement. And it's the same with the separation anxiety. We've been trying to help and improve this since he was five months old. That's like a year and a half ago and it's still no better. In terms of, because I know some subscribers will be watching this, in terms of how it's going at the minute, I know a lot of you keep commenting saying we'd really like an update video on how the separation anxiety is going and how you're working on it. The short answer is, we're not. We, we me and Jack, don't really do anything together outside of the house anymore unless we are traveling that's the only time that we get to leave because that's when he goes to my grandparents and we don't want to take him there all the time because they have very different expectations for their dogs than we do and it's not fair for him to go there do other things that we don't allow him to do then come back and then he gets confused again so we try and limit his time there as much as we can there are times where we have to both leave the house like if we have to go up to the van and things like that he does go there but we try to minimise it as much as possible and we just don't leave. That's kind of our life at the minute and that is really freaking hard. It still feels like we are in lockdown because we can't go anywhere. We don't know how to fix it because we are trying to contact loads of trainers and they either just don't reply or I don't like their methods or <laughs> I've had a few where I've been emailed back and forth and then they just ghost me. So, we are trying to fix it. We are doing it in small increments because I really want to do like positive training with Oakley. I don't want to do anything where like, I don't know, there's like the electric cars and things like that. I don't want to do anything like that. So we're trying to do it in increments where at the minute we're leaving the house for one minute because we can't even get up to like five. We're trying to do that every day, but sometimes it just feels like we don't want to because it's hard having to think every day I have to do some sort of thing to try and help him and sometimes you just can't be bothered. You know, like, I know it comes with the territory of owning a dog, but sometimes you just can't be bothered and it's really, really hard thinking that you're buying a dog, being like, oh, they're just going to fit into your life, they're just going to fit into your lifestyle and it's not every day, it's a slog, like, you've got to do something every single day and it's just really difficult and that's another thing that I struggle with it is the expectation from him and I like I don't know how to phrase this very well but I really struggle with the idea of being like right I've took him for a walk he's been on a long line walk but he's still just lying here like you you still feel bad for them not doing anything even though that's what you want them to do you want them to just go and lie down and go to sleep but then you're like but I feel really bad that this is his existence that's a kind of separate issue that's a me issue but it all kind of builds up you are all, you have these expectations and you want this life that you want to lead and you want to take them all these new places. This is a huge thing for me. When I got a dog, I was like, I can't wait to take him on hikes. I can't wait to go canoeing with him. But then, now, I think of taking him on a hike and I'm like, there's going to be so many off-lead dogs though that I can't control. And then if he sees like a dog and it gets too close, he's going to start pulling on his lead. And then he's going to pull on the lead and that's going to reinforce that he's allowed to pull on his lead and he can't go, he can't do that because then he can't walk on his line. And it's just so freaking hard because you want to lead this life that's so beautiful with your dog. But then in reality, you struggle to do any of the things that you ever imagined. And again, it's freaking hard. The final thing I want to talk about as well is, I mentioned it in the beginning, is the loneliness of it all as well. Because when you choose to go the route that I've gone down, where you want to train them and it's not just a you get a dog and then that's it you don't really do anything with them kind of thing or you try and do things and then you can't it feel, uh, for me personally oh it feels like you're the only person in the world who's went down that route 
and then is struggling. Because like I said at the beginning, everybody acts as if owning a dog is the best thing in the world. It is, like you see those TikToks, don't you, where it's like, if you're thinking about getting a dog, this is your sign to get it because it's the best thing I ever did that brings so much joy into my life. I am such a happy person. And you see people being like, if you're thinking about getting a second dog, do it. Your friend needs a buddy and things like that. And then you see all these videos of dogs being absolutely adorable and being so cute and seeing these hikes that are just stunning and then walking by people's side. And then you're like, what is wrong with my dog? Or what is wrong with me? That's the route I took where I was like, I am doing something really, really wrong and I have no idea what it is because I am doing exactly everything that the trainers say to do and everybody else seems to be better off. Like everybody seems to be enjoying their life with their dog more than what I am. And that is the main, like I said, the main reason for doing this video because it turns out that not everybody is like that because I've had like, I don't know, it must be about 20 messages of people saying that watching my videos helped them because it made them feel like they weren't the only one who was struggling. I know you hear about puppy blues and stuff, but I hadn't heard of that at all until somebody messaged me being like, I got major puppy blues as well. And it is 100% a thing. And not everybody finds owning a dog the best thing in their life. It's hard, I think, as well, talking to people who without dogs who don't understand it because people are just like, oh, I'm so jealous. And you're just in your head, you're like, do you want him? <laughs> that was a joke, don't come at me. But there is an element to truth in it. You're just like, don't do it because it's the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. And as well, it comes as well with working breeds. Like a lot of people are just like, oh, I love it. And then they look, you look, <laughs> they've got the, dog that only wakes up for an hour a day and you're just like, I wish that was my life. And you know what, at the end, at the end of the video, that's all I'm trying to say is that you are not alone and it is really freaking hard. And if you ever need somebody to rant about how much you're hating your dog in that moment, I'm the person to come to because I will rant about Oakley for as long as I can. It is hard. I am not saying that I wouldn't have Oakley. I have Oakley, here's, here's my life now. I made this decision and I will stick with it as long as I possibly can. But my life is completely, completely different now he is here. I can't go out, go on then, come on. I can't go out without him and when I go out with him, it's a very, very different kind of experience. So I'm not here to scare people off getting a dog, I'm not. And I'm not here being like, my life is so hard, but it has affected my life more than I ever, ever, ever thought it would. And people need to know about that because I wish somebody had warned me about it before getting a dog. I know there are out resources out there and I'm sure somebody else is out there. You know, you admit, you twat. Someone else is out there saying how hard it is to own a dog, but I never saw it. So I'm being that person, hopefully for somebody else, for not feel, not to feel alone, not to feel like they're the worst person on the planet. As long as you feel like you're doing your best, that's all you can do. And if you need a rest from your dog, that is completely a-okay. If you need a break, if you need to leave them, obviously in a safe place with someone for like a week, I feel like I could use that every month. So please don't feel guilty. You are allowed to hate and love your dog at the same time. It just happens, doesn't it? Yeah, you've got problems. It's not your fault. It's just you've got problems and you're a bit of a dickhead, but we love you still. Yeah. Anyway, I have no idea how long this video has ended up, but I feel like it needed talked about. I don't really know if it had a function apart from People feel less lonely. But I hope it helped someone. If it did help you, please make sure to leave this video a like because I do get a lot of dislikes on um, Oakley videos and YouTube doesn't like it when you get a lot of dislikes. As long as people like it as well as disliking it, it's fine. But if people dislike it a lot, <laughs> it's not very good, is it? You tell the people to like it. You're gonna tell them. But thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, I'm impressed. You've got to subscribe now. There is more Oakley content. Not all of it is so negative, is it? Not No. We did a makeover for your bedroom the other week, didn't we? We did. 
But that is going to be it for this video. I shall hopefully see you in another one that's not as negative. But just know as well, he is very, very loved. He gets a lot of attention and a lot of pets. And you love looking at me, don't you? So please don't worry about him. He is absolutely okay and we are trying to get help with him. If you know anybody of a positive trainer in the Northeast, I would appreciate any links that you have. But that is going to be it. We shall say goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye.